is the sound of the all new Range Rover Velar SV Autobiography. So this is a very cool SUV and if you like real crazy sounding muscle car like SUVs, this is a good option. So this is gonna be my full in-depth review over this Velar SV Autobiography. We're gonna see how it sounds. We're gonna do some hard accelerations. We're gonna check out the interior, really go in depth and we're just gonna have a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and check out the 2020 Range Rover Velar SV Autobiography Dynamic Edition. That is a lot of words, a lot of syllables, and this car is a lot of money. So this is around $95,000. Uh, you guys can see the exact MSRP here on the screen. And all you have to know is all of those words mean that this is the nicest and the most powerful Range Rover Velar that your hard-earned money can buy. And obviously we're going to go over every detail. And if you guys are new to my channel, I would love to have you guys subscribe really quick. It's super easy. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, that's it. Nothing else to be done. And obviously if you like the content, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Uh, let's me know that I'm doing a good job and hopefully helping you guys learn about these cars in a very engaging way. But let's go ahead and jump into this color. This is called Byron Blue or Byron Blue, however you choose to pronounce it, just know that it is a really cool blue. It's very bluish gray, and in some areas you can even see just slight hints of purple. It's a really nice paint coat, and I think on this car with the black accents and the red brake calipers, it really does look very, very nice. Um, I think this color suits it well, and obviously you have multiple color options to choose from, but this is just, um, one of my personal favorites if you want color, but you don't wanna to be too vibrant, too out there. Now, as we move to the front, here is where you're going to get specific touches to this SV Autobiography Dynamic Edition. So first off, you're going to get this bigger, more aggressive front end. And I mean, this thing looks really, really mean. You have a ton of functional areas for air to flow through. And as you get a little bit closer, you can see down here, you can have all this functionality here. You do have LED fog lights located right down here. You're gonna have LED daytime running lights, which are your signature Range Rover running lights. Obviously you have that on the normal Velar, but it just looks really good. And then at night you have full LEDs and it just makes this car look so elegant, so luxurious, and you can see really well, which is a huge benefit of LEDs. And moving through, you have a bunch of areas here for sensors, parking sensors, adaptive cruise, Land Rover badge, Range Rover badge up top, which does have this interesting little pattern. If you guys can see that in the middle. Very cool indeed. Now there is one huge knock on the front. I guess you can consider it the front, but as you move to the hood, you have these areas here and these are completely fake. So these have no functionality whatsoever and they say Range Rover. So definitely a design piece and doesn't add any sort of cooling to the engine whatsoever. Now, as we move here to the wheels, you have these massive 22 inch wheels. And you're gonna have 22s in the front and in the rear. And these are wrapped in Pirelli Scorpion Zero tires or 265 40s all the way around. So you have a nice square setup since this is all wheel drive, kind of makes sense. Then as you go up, you can see a little bit of that clamshell style hood line going right there. You have this awesome piece here to the side, which once again, adds no functionality, it just looks really, really good. And then as we scoot back to that side profile, you can really get a good sense of what this vehicle, I guess, feels like. It doesn't truly feel like a big SUV. If anything, this feels like a slightly lifted wagon. It's pretty long in its uh, dimensions and the roof is really low. And so because of that, you guys can see from here to here, it's actually a small little area and that's what really makes this car feel a little bit sportier than the rest of the lineup, for example. Now as we move back to that rear quarter area, you guys can see I like the wraparound taillights. They look cool during the day and then at night, full LEDs. So it has this really cool, almost three-dimensional 
look to them. Uh, your blinkers are going to be LEDs as well, and obviously full LEDs all around this car. And as you get a little bit closer, you have your Velar badge located right here. It is gonna be blacked out Range Rover there in the middle. And then your only SV autobiography badge here in the back. And at least on the exterior, that's the only badge that says SV autobiography. Now, as we move down, here's one of the highlights of this car. Those really beautiful looking quad exhaust tips. Now, if you get closer, you guys can see the actual exhaust is within this little chrome piece here, but either way, it is a glorious sounding engine. So let's go ahead, fire up that supercharged V8 and hear how this beast sounds. All right, pardon the leaf blower in the background, but getting inside of the Range Rover Velar SV autobiography. So one cool thing is when you open the door, you do have this little plaque right here that's going to show the silhouette of the car, which looks really, really nice. And with the SV autobiography, you are going to get a really cool interior setup. So looking around the cabin, you have a lot of obviously really nice materials. And as we start here at the door, you're gonna have Full leather up here so this is all going to be leather leather here got this huge just pure aluminum door handle right there and I mean that thing looks really really cool right here you're gonna have some more brushed aluminum you guys can even see the grain in there it looks amazing uh, really soft leather here all of your window controls door locks mirror controls memory seats these like metal speakers here for your Meridian sound system. Decent amount of cubby space, but this is going to be hard plastic right there. Your Range Rover um, door sill right here is going to illuminate at night. You have aluminum pedals located down there. You have the leaf blower in the background once again, and you are going to have your seating controls uh, located here. Uh, the leather quality is incredible. You have this nice white stitching there, quilted leather, through the middle with perforations and that's going to run all up the middle of the seat i do wish it had just a little bit more bolstering the bolstering on here is okay but as you guys can see it's not very aggressive so you do slide around a lot especially here in the shoulder area but let's go ahead and hop in and we'll check out the rest all right so here's where mr leaf blower is going to come in handy so shutting the door we're going to see how quiet this is Pretty good. You can obviously still sort of hear leaf blower guy. Uh, but looking around the cabin, you guys can see this is a really nice interior. It's the same setup that you get in a lot of Land Rovers. It even looks similar to some Jaguar products. Now to start, it's very simple. Start stop button right here. As long as the key is on the inside, you're gonna hit that button start. Nice. And upon starting up, one of my favorite details is your shifter is actually going to lift up from the console, basically revealing itself to you. And it is a really nice, beautiful shifter, which we'll get to in just a second. All right, so starting at the steering wheel. Nice steering wheel design. You have perforated leather over to the side, smooth leather on the bottom, smooth leather on the top. Really nice grip extensions here. You guys can see it's got this nice chunky area here. 
uh, you're going to have these aluminum paddles located right back there with that brushed look to them. I, I love this little area here because these buttons are going to map themselves according to what menu you're on and it, it's just a really cool thing. I like seeing it switch between uh, the different settings right there. Range Rover badge here in the middle. Cruise control settings over here to the right. And yeah, I just really enjoy the whole look of the steering wheel. Over here, you're going to have your wipers, rear wiper. Over here to the left, you have your blinkers, lighting controls, fog lights, rear fog lights. Then as you come up, you're going to have a tweeter there for your Meridian sound system. All Alcantara located on the headliner. So you guys can see more of that there. And as you come to here in the middle, you guys can see your head up display floating away there nicely. It is really crisp, very easy to read, so I do quite enjoy that. Uh, this is was this looks like it should be soft, but it has no give to it. Uh, it's not like hard plastic. It's like thinly leather wrapped hard plastic. It's really hard to explain. But then as you come here, you guys can see it's got some give to it. This just doesn't. Uh, speaker right back there. And as you come over here, you've got this nice piano black with these aluminum accented vents. Coming down, you have your screen right here, which is one of your touch screens. And you can just scroll through, mess with everything. Uh, you can go through do your vehicle dynamics. You guys can see ambient lighting right over there. You also have Apple CarPlay on here as well. So, you know, you just plug that in and it really just takes care of most of the uh, things for you. This is really cool, vehicle dimension. So if I hit this, and if you guys wanna see how big this is to fit in your garage, you can take some screenshots of this right here. It even shows you different things like um, your off-road height. And it can even, I believe, show your breakover angles. There we go. How cool is that? So that's your breakover angle and all your different departure and approach angles in off-road setting, normal, and then that's in your access height setting. Really, really cool. Now as we move down, this screen is very cool. So you can do lots of things on here from switching between your climate, you can mess around with your climate, you can switch to your seats, and through your seats you can go through there, mess with your massage seat settings, which this does have. It doesn't have different, um, I guess, types of massages, but you do have massage seats, uh, heated seats, you can have cooled seats on here as well. You can go to your vehicle settings and on that, that's where you can control things like the height of the vehicle. You can adjust the different drive modes. Um, you can adjust the exhaust sound, traction control, and then you do have your settings which you can go through as well. And obviously you have your climate here. You can push this ring to pull up your seat settings and just do it that way. And then right over here, you can do the same thing with your fan speed volume, traction, hill descent, max AC, and then max defrost right there. There's that beautiful shifter. So let's get a better look at it. It's got this really nice knurled finish on the outside. Uh, just all aluminum, brushed aluminum up top. Reverse, it's gonna pull up your backup camera. Very high res. I really like the way it looks. You have your guidance lines. Um, and it's just a really cool looking camera. So. Uh, very good to use a backup camera when it has high resolution because you trust it more and you feel like you're seeing things in a little bit more real time. Drive and then to put it into the sport mode you push down, slap over to the right and that's going to put you in sport. At that point it'll be a more aggressive shift pattern and then you can use the paddles but you can use the paddles in drive as well. Cup holder here by pushing this Land Rover emblem which is just pure metal right there. Reveals your cup holder more cup holders though this one doesn't have a cover so if you do want your whole center console to look very nice that's the best that you can get folding up here you have two armrests very soft one here one there lifting that up hit my camera you do have a decent amount of space actually you do not have a decent amount of space i take that back it's very shallow not a lot of room here you're going to have uh two i'm sorry you're gonna have a us two usbs right here I cannot get myself together. Micro SIM, 12 volt, and that's pretty much it. No room in there at all. Very, very small storage space. Lockable glove box, lined in felt, frameless mirror with your uh, home link located there. It also has auto dimming. Uh, you are going to have these touch sensitive lights. If you guys can see this, there we go. So you just barely tap it. Your moonroof. You got this giant panoramic roof. You can see the sunshade coming up. 
vanity mirror with LED lights. Doesn't move, doesn't come out, doesn't even have an extension. So that's very interesting. But that's gonna wrap up the inside. Let's go ahead and check out the back seat. All right, so getting in the back of the Range Rover SV Autobiography. This is a very nice place to be. Now, being the Velar, this isn't as big as like obviously your full-size Range Rover, so you have a little bit less room here, but it's still good. This is where I would be sitting being six feet tall. I've got about, geez, two and a half, maybe three inches of knee room right here. My feet can slide under easily, uh, which is very, very nice. And you have some mat pockets located right back here. Now, in terms of headroom, I've got, I've got plenty of headroom, so despite my large hair, which is also frizzy today, making it even larger, uh, this adds maybe another two inches, two to three inches on top of me, and I still have about another, I'd say two to three inches, depending on where my head is, so if I go further back here, it's a little bit less than if I were to lean forward and be right below where this uh, moonroof would be or this panoramic moonroof would be. So uh, it just depends on how you have your seats set. Now the seats are electronic, so I can push a button here on the side and you guys can see it going up. It's very slow. I think this is when I would prefer a manual um, handle, that way I can do it quicker, because uh, it does take a little bit. But as you guys can see, going all the way back, fully reclined, it's, it's very, very comfortable. So I do like that. You have the same leather quality uh, stitching here, quilted leather in the middle, really plush, folding down the middle armrest, uh, pretty deep cup holder, nice areas here to grip your drink, really soft, but no compartments located here. You don't even have USBs back here, which is kind of unfortunate. You only have this 12 volt here in the bottom, and then you are going to have some controls here to control like your uh, AC and things like that. You also have two vents located here in the middle. You also have two more vents here off to the sides. Uh, coming up, you've got a nice grab handle, a hook here to hang like you're dry cleaning, anything you need to hang there. And then the entire headliner is all that Alcantara. It looks very nice. LED lights right up here. Great view because of that panoramic roof and you have a great view of the front, which is just a beautifully designed cabin. Um, I like it a lot. Now shutting the door, super, super solid shut, um, rock solid. Very soft, all leather up top, leather, leather, scratchy plastic here at the bottom. Two big uh, aluminum speakers here for your Meridian sound system. Well, that's pretty much gonna wrap up the back seat. Let's go ahead and check out trunk space. Okay, so coming to the back of the Range Rover Velar. Now, I have two ways to get in. I can use the key, pop the hatch like that, or there's a button perfectly in between the Range and the Rover. You just hit that, and then it'll open right up for you. Now, one side note, when this is opened all the way up, it's pretty nice. So six feet tall, my head's not touching. I can get in and out of this thing without bumping my head. And this is at the low setting. If you had this a little bit higher, uh, this should not be an issue by any means. Now, once you're back here, you have a decent amount of space. You guys can see the cargo capacity here. And then with the seats down, obviously you have a lot more room to fit things in. That's the biggest benefit of an SUV and you still obviously get that higher ride height. Now, this does have LED lights back here, so at night you can see everything very, very well, get your belongings in and out, and you know be able to see everything around you. Now, lifting up the floor, here is one cool part. Pardon the mess right here, uh, but you have this leather strap right here, which is pretty cool. Now, you lift that up, and you have the most like JDM aftermarket spare I've ever seen in my life. Like, what in the world is this? And I can't imagine someone would wanna put that on their $90,000 Range Rover riding around with this bright orange uh, rim. It's pretty hilarious that they put it in there. I almost thought it was a joke, but it's pretty real as you guys can see. Um, now you do also have a 12 volt back here. You have this cargo cover, which is going to come as an option. Uh, you're also going to get a little bit of uh, hooks right here. So that way, if you have nets, if you have grocery bags or anything you want to utilize these hooks for, you can utilize them and you have four, two on this side, two on that side. That's pretty much going to be the extent of the back cargo area. And then you're just going to hit that button to shut. Let's go ahead and see what powers this thing. So coming under the hood of the Range Rover Velar SV Autobiography. This is the same power plant you get in something like the Jaguar F-Type SVR. So it's that 550 horsepower, supercharged, five liter V8. So power figures, 550 horsepower, like I said, and 502 pound-feet of torque. That is going through an eight-speed ZF automatic transmission, and this is going to be routed to all four wheels because this is standard all-wheel drive. And 
that's a good amount of power. This is a heavy SUV. You guys can see the weight on this thing right here. So it is pretty heavy. And then those two in combination, supercharged V8, big, heavy SUV, means you don't get the greatest fuel economy. So you can see the fuel economy figures here and they're not great. But if you have the money to afford a $90,000 plus Velar, you hopefully have the money to pay for the fuel that is going to definitely be needed for this beast. Now, let's go ahead and get this on the road and see how this drives. All right. Nice. Okay, so driving the Range Rover Velar SV Autobiography Dynamic Edition. I'm not even going to make you guys wait. We're going to throw her straight into the dynamic setting because you have to hear how good this thing sounds. Okay, so if I hit dynamic, it's automatically going to throw the exhaust mode on. I'm going to throw this into manual mode. Here we go. thing sounds insane. Jeez. It's like thunder, guys. Oh my word. All right, we're in a tunnel, so let's do a little bit of launch action. All right, so I've got this corner here. So let's go ahead and see how this dynamic edition does dynamically. Fourth, let's drop her in the third. Here we go. Oh man, that's good. I felt it kind of rotate a little bit uh, as I was giving it gas in that corner. That was very, very impressive, uh, but it did really well. All right, let's do a little bit of launch control. So uh, we're in dynamic, I have it in the S mode, floor the brake, floor the accelerator. review of the Range Rover Velar SV Autobiography. This is an interesting car. Uh, I think the biggest question I'm left with is who would buy this? Who would look at the competition and say, none of that is for me, this is what I want? Because you have competitors from Mercedes-Benz AMG who make some crazy, awesome sounding, arguably even a little bit more luxurious on the inside SUVs. You have Jeep with their Trackhawk making more power, not as luxurious, way more powerful, way more, I guess, raw feeling. And then you have the F-Pace SVR, which is the mechanical twin to this under the Jaguar brand. And you can even throw in vehicles like a Model X or something like that, maybe Model Y performance. Um, but either way, this does have a few special things that make it unique. This has that awesome, raucous sounding V8 soundtrack but with a little bit of the luxury that you would associate more with Range Rover. Now, it's not the same level of luxury as like a Mercedes-Benz, but it still is something very cool to be in, drive, and experience, and you have that awesome Velar look, which I think is one of the best looking SUVs on the market, at least in terms of crossovers. But let me know what you guys think. Comment below, subscribe if you like my reviews, if you've watched one or even two of my reviews. Uh, I'd love to have you guys subscribe for more content. I post two to three times a week, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next review. Y'all take care.